Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's crazy. Uh, uh, you know, I was going to announce Peter, but I, what can you say? I feel like if I say anything about Peter, I'm going to be missing something because Peter does like everything. Performer, studio performer, like live performer, uh, improviser, arranger, it, it, yeah, luthier, the, all, amateur all of luthier. That, yeah, all of that is, well, luth, luth, luth theory is just a hobby, you know, like I never make any money with it. Like I am not qualified. <laughs> well, you get right. paid through the school that we work at though. Yeah, but but there's a very okay. Now that now that we are going on the record with this, right? I don't want luthiers coming after me, like in case I'm stepping on their toes. Like like at the school where Thomas and I both work, I mean, you get a beginner student who bought like a fifty dollar Walmart guitar, and the action is like this high, you know. Like you can slide a truck between yeah, the frets yeah, yeah. And, and, and the strings. And the poor guy is wondering why can't, he can't play like, you know, an E chord or whatever. So yeah, like, yeah, of course we lower the strings and, you know, change the strings if necessary, like make it something, make it playable. But like, you know, like if a player comes to me, like I'm not going to like do work for them. You know, there are plenty of people who do that all the time, but I do my own stuff a lot because I've just learned to do it. Like I set up my own gear and I'm pretty meticulous about it. And I like restoration. And, and frankly, uh, I've seen Luthi like Luthiers or repair people kind of break things sure. and damage things. And I actually had to undo some things. So, yeah. you know, I just do my best, but I don't advertise myself as that, but as a player, sure uh what thomas said man thank you thomas so much it's very kind of you but my <laughs> my reply here's my reply it's out of necessity it's just like i'm trying to make some bread you know Tr trying to make some dough <laughs> and try to he's try a, to try to feed this expensive habit that i have you know so it's a, like he's this, a working guitarist it's it money goes in money <laughs> you know what i mean it's summer investments you know maybe i'll sell on these things for more than i bought but but yeah yeah guys i, I um uh just hustle a lot and uh um you know it's 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 tough but it's fun so so jack of all trades sort of yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah every time i see peter uh working and stuff he's always like i have to go to a gig right away uh because he's always doing i mean i mean you do gigs you know, filling in with like different bands, you get, do gigs with bands that you're in regularly on, yeah. you know, you know, not just guitar, but bass as well. And, and some other different kinds of guitar, maybe even some other instruments as well. I'm not, I'm not sure you do uh, well, yeah, a lot of yeah. stuff. Uh, yeah. So I've seen you do uh, all kinds of stuff like that. And, uh, and yeah, you, he's definitely, I mean, would you say that jazz is your specialty? Well, yeah, that, that's what that's what my degree is in. My my master's degree is in jazz, jazz performance. You know, very cool. So so that's the one area that I'm not allowed to suck at. Right? <laughs> yeah. You're not allowed to be bad. I'm wow. not allowed to be bad at that, right? I I, I, I must know that really well. You yeah, Castler's Kass um, watching this. Can't you know? Ariel Castler's watching this right now. He's yeah, Peter. Well, he well, you better well, be good. Yeah. Well, well, he you know he is. Um, First of all, he's a fantastic, um, you know, educator. And if he does watch this, you know, uh, there we go. You know, I, 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 I like really enjoy hey, my, my, <laughs> my experience there. Uh, but, you know, since we're talking about uh, being multifaceted, uh, he is, you know, definitely kind of a guy that has um, a lot going. Uh, he, he is on the BGSU faculty and he's doing guitar you know, he te teach, teaches mm -hmm. guitar and piano. Like right. one professor does piano and guitar. Uh, of course, jazz piano, right? Th there are plenty of classical pianists yeah. there, but but as far as jazz piano, he's the guy. And that blows my mind because right. at least everything I do is guitar related. Like it's different stylistically, but, you know, techniques carry over, you know, some skills carry, like knowledge of the fretboard is still the same. But to me, piano is like a totally foreign instrument, you know? Like, yeah. You know? Yeah, it's very so, tough. Uh, I've seen him play like both uh, instruments in a lot. You know, he'll play with like a jazz uh, quartet or something, and he will switch on and off between guitar and piano and stuff. So, yeah, he's got some serious skills. And, and the program that's over there, you know, it's, it's got to be one of the most uh, sort of job-centered 
programs I've seen. I mean, you're really going through that program. You're like really prepared to play with a band stuff on an yeah. electric guitar in a way that, you know, a lot of classical programs, you know, do not prepare you for that. Uh, yeah. So that yeah, was pretty cool. But uh, gentlemen, All we right. are gathered here today for uh, here, there and everywhere arrangements by the Beatles. And some of them are quite jazzy. So it's a good thing we got Peter here. Yeah, Tony, you got the goods. You got everything nice. ready. Yes, everything is uh, good to go, except Thomas did except not the, say the the, uh, <laughs> the line yet, but... Yeah. All right, should I do the line? Should I do it? All right, I'm doing it. Welcome to the Guitar Arrangers Podcast, the greatest Guitar Arrangers Podcast in the history of the universe! uh yeah very very nice i mean we can use the intro from before so <laughs> let's just get right into it with some some beetles hell yeah um, i'll share my screen here now i want to hear that uh that takamitsu version first so we can talk about we can talk about that yes all right this so not, this is uh, uh jacob cordover here there everywhere <sighs> And yeah, because absolutely. it's on GSI, we get to see exactly which guitar it is. The Bream Hauser from 1957. <laughs> yeah, Belong man. to Bream. Whoa. Wow. That's kind of a uh, deal. <laughs> that is really crazy. You, you know, uh, Bream, Bream has, I don't know if you guys are, are big, like, you know, uh, obviously I'm into like studying history of instruments and such. So I don't know if you guys are hip, but uh, Bream, uh, has owned several houses, you know, and loved them. You know, one got stolen. One is on display at the, at the Met in New York right now, uh, along with Segovia's famous house, or uh, house or senior, the first 1937, I believe, is the, <laughs> the Holy Grail, the Holy Grail. So if you're in New York at the Met, man, you can get this close, you know, get the, to the to the pretty significant instruments in our <laughs> yeah you, since you're our history buff why don't you tell the tell the fans about uh, takamitsu well actually i'm i'm the wrong guy to to, to talk about tak <laughs> takamitsu no i can talk about dream all day long and his guitars and you know what he had for dinner you know when he played a little more hall, you know in 1982 but um same with the beatles you know i can tell you how many times they re-recorded you know whatever you know strawberry fields forever or whatnot uh and what kind of um settings they used on their uh, abbey road board but um tak takamitsu that's probably your department composition <laughs> well i don't know that much about takamitsu tony do you know about takamitsu no i mean i mean all i know really is that he's a pretty famous uh you know composer and uh, arranger for the guitar and for other instruments um you know in the 20th century and he's a big fan of the beatles so he's got a lot of uh beatles arrangements uh and the, i think the most famous one is probably his arrangement of yesterday which i mean if you've if you've ever heard anybody playing yesterday by the beatles it's it's probably some derivation of 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 takamitsu's version like everybody plays it anna Vidovich plays it uh yeah, I mean, I mean, it's just like Takamitsu's arrangements of um, the Beatles are really like the gold standard. But for this one, I thought it would be it was really interesting because because um, I almost had a hard time, a harder time hearing the song in this version than I did in some of the more simple versions. So it's really interesting to see how Takamitsu really, um, you know, adds a lot of harmonies, different harmonies and stuff and different um, I don't know. It's a really, it's a really complex arrangement, but uh, yeah, I thought you guys would enjoy this, and uh, it'd be cool to see before we got into other people's arrangements of uh, the same song to see how they differ. But yeah, All this right. guy who's playing it did not actually make this arrangement. So I make that clear. Yes. All it's right. Let's awesome. check. Let's check it out. Thank you. 
So based on that performance, Peter, would you label this man, or I guess Takamitsu rather, as a cat? Is, is, Takamitsu, a is Takamitsu is a cat? A cat? <laughs> yeah, most definitely he's a cat. With a capital C, yeah. Oh, is this like a, this is a jazz thing. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, also, also, he's cooking. He's, he's cooking. Oh. oh. And I dig it. I, I really dig it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. C- certainly lots of jazz yeah. harmony there, you know. Um, certainly, like, there are plenty of, you know, jazz guitarists and, and jazz pianists who would use that kind of voice, you know, uh, voice leading harmonizations, you know, um, some tensions in there, like dominance. Yeah, very, a l- little bit of impressionism there. Would you guys agree that? Especially in the beginning, there's a little bit of like Debussy-esque uh, tonal palette. But I, I think- can see what you're saying with the chords that get moved around, same chord mm-hmm. shape moved around. Yeah. Yeah, Tony, what were you going to say? I know Tony's drooling over this setup right now. Tony's like, man, one of these days, I'm going to have a recording studio that's like this. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You guys talk, talking about this? That? No, I'm talk, we're talking about it in the GSI. Like, I mean, look at oh, that's amazing. And everything. Yeah. yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, and, and they got those guitars in the actual cases on the wall, too. So that's like... <laughs> the cases that uh, Ramirez made for them. You know. Oh, is that right? No. <laughs> you just got pranked. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe there's something I, I, I don't know. But those cases look <laughs> wonderful. They look wonderful, man. Yeah, yeah. We gotta get you some case if you had cases in your setup though, I feel like it would get it would be too cluttered. Well they all need to yeah. be different shapes and thicknesses oh, too. That's true. Yeah. You know, those lutes got like got big old backs on them. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I mine are getting dusty, so I kinda have to <laughs> you gotta dust them off every day. Dust them off. If I'm not using it, I at least have to clean it, too, you know. Dude, I'll I'll come over. I'll dust those guitars, dude. That's a crazy guitar collection over there. There's a lot of really great classicals in that collection Peter's got over there. Um, but uh, yeah, I just thought this would be cool. I, normally, we only listen to people who like make their own guitar arrangements, but you know, Takamitsu isn't around to uh, play. And I don't think Takamitsu played too much guitar himself. I don't know, I could be totally wrong on that. Uh, but, you know, he's not around to uh, play this for us. I, I couldn't really find any other versions that were as, as nice as this one. So, you know, this guy did a great job yeah, playing definitely it. Definitely phenomenal playing. Uh, and now, yeah, let's let's see somebody who who actually did make their own arrangement see how different it is because i mean it's really hard to you know takamitsu's level of composing and arranging is so freaking high uh it's hard to compete with but i think there's a lot of really cool versions and everyone's version is pretty different Mm -hmm. yeah um yeah and normally we talk over these songs too but this (laughs) is like one of the first (laughs) performances where i i really felt like i couldn't speak over the playing i didn't want to miss anything you know um, yeah i'm going to so the good. other arrangements so I'll, I'll just talk over it um because i mean we're not trying to you know this isn't the radio we're not giving away everyone's music for free uh we're, we're here to talk over your music and uh people can go listen to it on youtube afterwards but uh this one was this one was hard. I wanted to hear every detail, you know. Yeah. Would you guys agree that that's actually probably one of the most significant compliments that that one person can give to another, like musician? You know, it's like um, we are all uh, musicians, obviously. So, you know, if you're playing and somebody's just talking and, uh, and you're noticing it, it can probably bum you out. So, if you are the performer and everyone's like engaged and hundred percent is with you on that journey i mean that's pretty amazing so i think he succeeded in captivating the, the audience so that's, that's yeah great. well i'll do him one compliment better and i'll say uh i like his uh purple shirt and tan jacket combination that is the highest compliment he has received thus this far <laughs> <laughs> I need to get myself a, a, a purple buttoned up shirt or really the classical guitar thing to do nowadays. You know, the Andrew York, Bill Cannon guys are way is to get like one of those really, you know, 
kind thin, of a, flowy, flowy, uh, button, flowy button up shirts. It has it's highly patterned and it's, yeah. it's made out of silk, you know? You know, you got to have like a whole, I bet, I bet, uh, you know, York and Cannon guys are, I bet they got a, like a whole closet where they just got like 20 yeah. of those and they're all the same uh, pat exact pattern, and but there's like 20 also, silk shirts. Also Ben Verdery. <laughs> ben, ben I was Verdery. thinking Ben Verdery too. Really? He does that yeah. too? Yeah. I was seeing with the Hawaiian shirts, definitely but not like flowing. the same patterned ones. <laughs> He's he's chilling in those clothes, you know. <laughs> is, is that kind of like a new age thing? Is is that like a little bit of a holistic life thing, or yeah, am I maybe. reading too much into it? Uh, you know, I think um, people are both in repertoire and in attitude, trying to maybe <laughs> move away from like such strict classical mm -hmm. past with the instrument, you know um tuxedos definitely seem to have been out for a while and people are playing rep from all around the world folk music stuff like that yeah and that's why tony shaved his head too in protest or that old you know formal way yeah um <laughs> if, if bach is another set piece in a competition i'll set myself on fire in the town square you gotta have a wig a powdered wig for if you play the uh, bach music <laughs> yeah so i can switch teams whenever i need to <laughs> whatever is whatever is most convenient for me as the team all back oh, all right let, let's get this next video going all right <laughs> okay so you'll definitely have to uh help me out with this one peter because you know these um what's it called chord solos mm -hmm. are uh I have a hard time judging it, their quality. I'm like, that sounds like jazz. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, let's yeah. find out. Tell me cat what to no look cat. for more, you know? I'm impressed with all of them. Although this one sounds more classical than the last one, actually. <laughs> This is more of like a smooth, like easy listening version. So far, we're not hearing any like dissonances. Yeah. Very true to the original. Looks like his technique is classical, right? Like the movements. down under so is this, this Australian guy I think so it's actually in a uh, secret underground base literally down under yeah 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 <laughs> he's playing in Atlantis as we yeah. speak he only plays like cool underground bands like the Beatles <laughs> <laughs> or he's homeless and he lives uh, in, like in, in, in the subway <laughs> Just a full time busker. <laughs> full time busker with the nicest guitar I've ever seen. Very nice. That was Bill Tires. I forgot to say the uh, name. Tire spelled like the British way. That's right. Well, well, do you think like he would ever see our our presentation here? Oh, it's yeah, it's possible. I'll send everybody who's been on the podcast. I send it to them if they have any 
uh, website or Instagram or anything yeah. that I can direct message or I'll even comment on their YouTube video if necessary. Yeah. 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 Well, see, yeah. I'll go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I shouldn't have said that the one chord bugged me. No, no you can say a chord. No, I mean, you. we're. Oh, my God. Technically, we're really supposed to be uh, critiquing these, I think, uh-huh. is the most. Yeah, well... It's got to be educational or critique to be the most fair use, right? So. Um, yes. And we made welcome. a mistake. We made a mistake, though, see, Tony, because we, uh, at least maybe I've made a mistake, because I haven't thought of a clear rating system yet before this show. But uh, as I was I'm wondering if you're going to notice that. I think that. <laughs> I mean, you know, I I think we can skip it today. No, we've got to do. We we can't let go of the rating system is the only thing holding this, you know, show afloat, Tony. So I would like to uh I would uh, for for the rating system today, I would like you to describe uh how it, beetle infested this uh, you know, this piece is and the better it is the deeper the infestation. Someone call an exterminator. So it was the first, was the Takamitsu one, then that's like maybe the gold standard. So would you say yeah. that that was like a house that's on, um, <laughs> it's on A&E hoarders, like a special <laughs> yeah, so beetle that edition? One's the, that one's the someone call an exterminator. This one, this one is like, um, uh, ma'am, you have uh reason for concern if you don't act now your home will soon be overrun i see so that, uh, <laughs> it's like the grand kids come in and confront <laughs> we're gonna send a tape of your house to a and e and see if we can get you on tv <laughs> yes and if the if the if the piece you know it doesn't sit well with us and all we'll say the house is, is squeaky clean so that so is, yeah, so that is all so the more infestation, the better, yes. right? We're, yes, like, yes, yes, yes. So as many beetles as possible. So 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 far, yeah. So far, the, the <laughs> arrangement that's like cockroach land, like yeah, cockroaches yeah, yeah, yeah. on the face, falling from the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, uh, Her- termites. It's, it's like a fear factor challenge. Yeah. Oh man! Oh man! We're hitting all the viral uh, things today. <laughs> all right all right well do you guys have any other uh comments about the level of infestation in this guy's uh playing or uh are we ready to move on to the next uh you know potential a and e disaster okay. episode I'll, I'll i'll say one thing i mean i mean this is very like polite you know like this this arrangement did not in- intrude upon you in any yeah. way like it was just very kind of like very minimal dissonance, almost zero dissonance, you know, like, so this wouldn't be inappropriate, like at a wedding or like, you know, just background music, you know, uh, compared to Takamitsu, like he had a lot more tension, a lot more um, uh, clear voice leading, like you could hear them, he would like break up the the, the melody in different registers, different octaves, mm-hmm. different um, textures, different textures. This is, you yeah. know, kind of kind of just clear and this is very true to the original you know just uh, safe yeah yeah i thought it was really interesting how like i almost had a easier time recognizing the songs with the arrangements that were more like this than i would have if i just hit that taku mitsu one right is the first guitar arrangement after listening to the original um so yeah i thought it was pretty good yeah i'm excited to see what's next honestly what's what's uh the rest of the stuff a lot of the other stuff is, is very similar to this, but we always give people extra, you know, brownie points for creating something that's accessible. Cause I feel like that's something in the guitar world where it's like, you know, that guy, you know, plays that Takamitsu version, but then it's like, it's hard to find that sheet music, you know? Um, and sure, it's hard and to see like exactly. If you're going to learn, a, you know, we were talking earlier about paid gigs and stuff. And I mean, if you're, uh paid gig is not a solo recital where everyone is expected to remain seated and quiet um there's no reason to learn something obnoxiously hard um that you know people might talk over and then you're like oh should i play that again like i don't (laughs) 
So of course there's always the <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. It, it's got to fit Absolutely. the occasion, and you can tell from his uh, channel. I think this is maybe designed to. Um, this video is kind of like an advertisement to buy the arrangement or to hire him to play background music, etc. So. Yeah. 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 Very much. I mean, like if, I mean, yeah, you know, you think about it in terms of like another song, like, you know, you, this song isn't very often requested for like a wedding or something, but if you think about it in terms of like that, you know, Canon and D song that everybody knows the Packabell's Canon song, um, you know, if I'm looking for a version to play for a wedding, which in the past, I, I, I think all of us guitarists have been at that point where we're like, let's, let's find a version of this online that we could play. And many of the versions online are like these six page masterworks. And it's like, this is not what I needed for this gig. I needed something that was like functional, not something that it's going to be the most like flashy concert repertoire, you know? Uh, I don't need Yamashita's version of the, the you know, Canon and D or the, of the cello suites. I just need like, you know, a functional version. So we always give people like this, like extra props for making something that's like really accessible and, and functional. All right. Cool. Let's see what else we got. Okay. So here's one that's extremely accessible. You got the tabs for free in the video from a uh, red tabber i don't see a hey look and somebody in the comments is critiquing the uh the no choice here <laughs> don't tell me what to do <laughs> oh oh wow that's a pretty specific uh, that, thing that's the first time i've actually seen <laughs> wow. a uh i've actually seen a critique like that i'm gonna read the reply to Music theory argument. All right. So at least uh, one of these people is, is back in this decision. Ooh. Sorry to put this on display for the whole world. We'll, uh, we'll see. Oh, my God. We can even see the can drama. So this is a steel string. So we've had all three kinds of guitars now. See, this is what you need for your wedding. This little, this little tabs right here, you know. <laughs> Any one of us could just like play this instantly, like if we had those tabs, you know. nice yeah it's so nice to see that tab and you can you can really see what's going on hmm. what's our extermination levels i mean this guy's got a real serious uh problem in his hand he's got a real serious beetle problem if he doesn't call an exterminator soon you know uh forget about forget about the leftovers there won't be a house to eat leftovers in
That's my rating. <laughs> yeah. Isn't the Beatles spelled differently than like Beatle? Isn't it supposed to be like drum beat? I don't know. Or are they the same? I, yeah, because Beatles is like two E's, right? Y- it, their name is certainly a pun. Like, you know, like they were, they thought they were clever. They're like, so there's beat, you know, and Beatles, you know. So there you go. There you go. Yeah, I will say um, I don't like all of the uh, hammer on and pull off choices, all the slur choices. And I also. I don't really like a lot of times whenever a slide goes up to a note that is not replucked. So like if I'm going to do a slide, I like to slide at the beginning and end of the slide. I don't like to do a pluck slide and then not do a um, pick after that. I mean, there's maybe there's an argument for a place that it would be, you know, good to do that. But that's just my personal taste. That's why I don't really put in like slurs or fingerings into stuff that I write because I very rarely like the slur choices that other people pick, you know, I got a very specific taste about it. So, uh, but other than that, yeah, I really like how like you can see all the sheet music. I mean, you could see too that the song is made up of some really popular chords like, uh, you know, G, A minor and B7, um, you know, you know, really popular classic cowboy chords that anybody that plays guitar can do. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's kind of that's kind of my initial take. We should talk about the elephant in the room. That one note on can. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it yeah. S can or was it the other one? It was the, the one with four. It was I forgot to pay beginning. attention actually. <laughs> it's um. Uh, just one more we'll over. A little bit, a little bit further. Or did I go too far now? No, it's alright. Yeah, it's, right. it's coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up. Right here. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so he he went. Yeah, he went. He went. Nobody can. As supposed to. As supposed to. Nobody can. It's supposed to go down, right? Um, so mm. that's, that's a pretty big change like that kind of did not sit well with me but you know maybe after repeated listening you could kind of develop a taste for it but on the first time if you know the tune it's it's a pretty bold thing to do you know like very big kind of like here you know sir paul <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do about it it's like that kind of a thing that's right. Maybe it was trying to beat the uh, YouTube copyright algorithm, you know? I wonder. Yeah. Uh, non-recognizable <laughs> Beatles melody. Um, yeah, I mean, when, whenever you change the, the melody, that's where um, the problems start to arise. I think people will let you get away with, you know, basically anything in the uh, in the accompaniment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But just to compare it to, like, the Takamitsu, like, the Takamitsu had a lot going for it, but you expected that, right? Like with the Takamitsu, you kind of expect it to be like a thing of its own. Like there are traces of the melody, but it's expanded in a very mature, professional, symphonic way. This this arrangement does not claim to do that, right? This arrangement is kind of modest and fairly simple, like Thomas pointed out. So then all of a sudden there's just one note, a melody note on a downbeat. If you know the tune, you're expecting different notes. He's just like, Damn. <laughs> So, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of cool, you know. He's bold, you know. He's questioning this. The Peter, <laughs> this 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 guy's house is not not as infested. It's not not worthy of being picked up by TLC. Yeah, this no, but... this one's definitely not making uh, making it on the hoarders, <laughs> but. <laughs> But yeah. it, might, it might still make it into a into a wedding gig though. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty, and you know he did use nice like like two voice texture, right? Like two two voice, which makes it pretty clear, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like I thought it of... was uh, yeah. I thought it was a little bit more textured out than some of the other ones that we heard. And uh, I mean, you know, I would probably be inclined to purchase this tab, and I could always go and change that four to a. A two on the G string mm-hmm. instead, or something. If I really want to, definitely had to do that a couple times when I've done uh, 
some gigs and got a special theme song online for the gig. Here we have best guitar tabs. We'll see about that. got a lot of baseline stuff going on but some of it baseline is like cadencing a little too early in some of the phrases you like that a i don't know how i feel about that coming in so soon but Pretty similar to the last one. Yeah, you, you liked it in the last one too. That's from the original, you know. That's they're being faithful to the stuff yeah i mean i liked um this guy's this guy's playing was uh was i think better than the last one as well like i don't know some of these youtube videos and i see that hand uh the way it's moving i'm like there's no way that that's loud enough um <laughs> in, in a lot of situations like this guy's definitely projecting a little more yeah and the arrangement yeah. was more complicated the arrangement was more complicated, but there was just some extra stuff that I, in the bass line that I didn't like every now and then. Um, I like most of it. It was just like right towards those cadences uh, in like the first half of it where he plays like that A. I wish I wish that A would like wait another couple of beats before coming in and then it would be like real nice. I don't know. There was something there was something funky in the. Uh, in in there as well. I'm not exactly sure, but yeah, the the playing wise, uh, I definitely like this one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a nice, you know, nice nice arrangement. Uh, pretty close to the original, you know. Um, uh, I I wish I could find out why, like, the right hand, like, didn't like he didn't really do different tones different tone colors right like everything yeah. was absolutely volume wise to dynamics wise too you know which is okay if the song is like like background or like kind of like how we said earlier if the song is just there to be constant i guess that's fine as opposed to yeah. like a performance but like if you come to a concert right a concert sit down concert you might expect like total variety more like the takamitsu version so we started yeah. with that one. We started with that one. Now, like, you know, <laughs> now we're missing any kind of like pizzazz, you know, go up the neck, yeah. do like something jarring. Yeah, yeah we're not going to get complaint. that, I don't think. We're not going to get that. No, know? it's it's a big complaint <laughs> uh, among the YouTube guitar community. They They don't do a lot of that. And I mean, you know, there is the flip side of the coin where, you know, like I think when it comes to tonal variety, like a lot of people try to like copy Julian Bream. And they try to do like the hot cold thing, mm -hmm. which I think is a little much. 
And then, you know, you can also get into players like Pavel Steidl, who, you know, their changes in tone color more have to do with the angle of their finger hitting the string right. rather than right. moving the hand around. And then you can also get into like the Laura Snowden Yamashita types that believe like the sort of extraneous movements that you do um, influence the tone as well. Like having your hand sort of flowing away from the guitar after playing a chord is going to help send that that sound out so there's like a lot of different beliefs about tone color production and stuff like that and it's very hard to tell that kind of stuff over a recording but yeah uh uh if 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 the if a lot of these youtube guitarists could do any of those things that would be an improvement because <laughs> it seems like a lot of them they kind of forget about i don't want to like specifically say that this uh youtube video did this but let's just say a lot of youtube videos the audio was recorded first and then the video is recorded second mm. and i think people don't memorize right. the tone right. changes so then when they go to film the video they're playing like tasto like right up here and like the sound is super naily and then it's just like harder to like sync it up in post so it's like let's just make this as boring and static as possible so my <laughs> hand is always in the correct p position for this like sync camera illusion. shot yeah yeah that's a good point i didn't but not think but about not this that. guy i'm just saying right that's a good point though yeah absolutely do, do you guys have any thoughts or or knowledge because i really don't on like how much editing or splicing happens in the professional guitar a classical guitar world these days because uh, uh, i i heard some stuff about how like even the pros do like editing these days and yeah. I might be behind times or something, but it kind of it was a bit of a shock to me. Uh, I don't know if you guys have any like <laughs> thoughts or knowledge on that because I really don't. I would expect that yeah. if you're trying to play concerts, like how do you not capture a perfect take? I don't know. Well, it's very hard when you're recording stuff because because we have this idea in mind of a piece that we perform as like, you know, we work it up to this perfection and then it, it, it comes out sounding a specific way, but really there are many, many ways that the piece can come out. That is perfection. Um, you know, you could play different areas with different tone colors and with slightly different tempos each time and stuff. So I would say it's, it's very hard to the idea that there is a sort of a perfect natural performance. I, 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 that will always come out when you do your guitar stuff, when you play your guitar just right. I don't necessarily believe in that as much. Um, and I don't think that people should have the expectation that a CD is reality. So I can certainly say that while, you know, every recording I've ever made is completely live taked and in no way spliced. Uh, uh, no, just kidding. Uh, but you know, there is many professionals I know of that that chop up. I mean, I couldn't name a single. Well, professional if I can that jump in here, up. I think that there's a lot of reasons why. So a player might be perfectly capable of playing the piece live perfectly, but um, microphones pick up different things than the human ears, particularly from like an audience perspective. Um, so a nail sound or a string scrape with the left hand that might have not been too bad in a live performance or would have gone unnoticed can absolutely like ruin a take because a microphone is particularly sensitive to that frequency um or maybe like the chair um, <laughs> makes like yeah obnoxious creaking sounds or i mean unless you have a nice studio people are recording these in their house their heater might go on um, just all these things and you're like recording a 15 minute piece and your cat starts asking for food or something. And it's like, I don't know. I, I think that <laughs> there's just so many factors. Plus it's really hard to find a good location to do the optimal video and the optimal audio. Um, yeah. like the Absolutely. background that you might want for a nice looking video might be like the noisiest room of your house or it might be on a island in the wind in hawaii uh, like ben verdery doing the chacon 
Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And having the spaces between the takes, I'm sure you, you, you may already know about all these tricks, but certainly like, you know, something that me and Tony did when we were recording some stuff from different albums is we'd be like between takes, I'd be like soaking my left hand in water to try to get rid of more of the squeaks. Because soften know? up, soften up, soften up your cool. calluses. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and also like in a live performance, your nails from playing so hard and start to get real scraggly too. Mm-hmm. And so if you take a break, then you can have, you know, good nails yeah. from uh, movement to movement and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know. There's so many reasons why you might, uh, Oh, you might change clip. a piece. If you, uh, if you play too loud, you might, um, you might actually play too loud for a microphone to pick up cleanly. This is also a really common problem with electric guitar. Um, you might just, <laughs> Uh, yeah, you might have some, particularly electric guitar who people record into their computer. Um, yeah, if you, if you start palm muting, all of a sudden those, those notes, um, spike much higher for some reason when you're palm muting. So I know a lot of times people have to actually change the volume level when they record palm mutes and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm certainly, you're, 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 um, your I'm idea sure. though of the of the you know people who do like look down on like like the more different chunks you have spliced together say your your recording is like 30 spliced pieces instead of uh 20 spliced pieces yeah there will be people in the classical guitar world who will be like what the what the hell do you do think you're doing you know <laughs> right. but yeah it's kind of it's an old way of looking at things I think most of the, you know, the biggest name people too have um, proven themselves with live recitals um, to the point where people don't care at all what their recordings look like, but yeah. Um, Anyway, I I agree though that that news did uh, maybe come as a little bit of shock to me as well. All right. It's something you never think about until you start making videos. (laughs) <laughs> yeah earlier and this is off the record you know earlier you said uh that like the greatest compliment somebody can receive is like um that they like uh you know like treat this you know nobody wants to uh talk during their uh song they're like entranced by their song yeah the real best compliment is when someone comments on your video and says you know, people don't watch Thomas's videos because he's a good guitarist. People just watch him because he's a hot piece of meat. Huh. You know, Do people that's say that. The... All the time? <laughs> no, that's what I yeah? want them to say. Th- Thomas deletes all that's the what comments. I... <laughs> I talk about how dummy thick he is. That's like, that's delete, why I'm a delete. <laughs> this is why I'm I'm on this diet now, is so I could get comments like that on my video. Yeah. People don't it... like Thomas. They just like him because of his muscles. Yeah, it's a it's a double edged sword, man. Um, it's seriously no, it can it can go wrong real fast. Um, I've um, you know, yeah, I <laughs> I I may have gotten a couple of gigs, you know, for which I wasn't qualified, just because like it was like a girl who was like, hey, you know, you're cute, you play, and and it, I don't know. Musically, though, uh, they didn't want somebody cute. They wanted somebody who's got that that Segovia look, you know. <laughs> right, like see, like yeah, like, like if it's Segovia versus any one of the three of us for like a Taylor Swift gig, who's gonna get the gig? Three of us. <laughs> no. Taylor Swift doesn't care if you're Segovia. You know, she's like, can you like, yeah. you know. I don't know. I think the I think the promoter will just cancel the Taylor Swift gig and book Segovia instead. Oh, uh, yeah, we, guitarist can dream. Yeah, I, no, they. Who is this zombie <laughs> trying to book a gig? <laughs> the Spanish passport from the 1800s. Get out of here! I don't know. Yeah, I don't know when the, he was born, the, but because the the promoters, you know can be dumb <laughs> as well right Af- going after the money <laughs> oh yeah don't okay. even get started on that <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to waste too much of our of our Let's quality banter 
Guy looks exactly like Andrew York. Yeah, I, I thought so too. Even holy snap, Andrew York's been filming videos like this too. And doesn't he play with a cutaway sometimes? Definitely. I'm actually familiar with this guy. Just from YouTube or um videos? He has some notoriety. Like he's like a pro, like well known. His his version is very souped up. Yeah, right there. He's really the first. Well, him and the Takamitsu have definitely done a lot with the rhythm as well. Not doing that just steady stream of eighth notes or whatever. And that was very hard. Uh, yeah. a lot of chords. <laughs> he, he's a cat for sure. <laughs> Great, like, contrapuntal stuff too. Man, those moving block chord shapes, though, have been extremely <laughs> crazy. <laughs> He's playing them so clean. so much barring man how's that dude's finger not falling off well it does appear that his action is very low oh uh, you guys see okay. it um that's true this guitar is definitely made to be more playable than the standard classical right right and you can kind of tell by the, the i can hear the strings hitting the frets a little bit of this is, is more of a sort of a groovy, danceable rhythm, whereas the Takamitsu rhythm felt a lot more kind of spacey and ambient, almost like, um, well, it's like a classical I piano the, solo. I thought the impressionist comment really did work for that one. Yeah. Here, here we get a little bit of like Ooh. Latin thing, a little bit of a tukka, like a tumba or something. Definitely like feeling the clave. Yeah, and this one's pretty long too. Like there's so much done with it that he needs a lot longer to play through it all because he's done so many different variations of, on these uh, verses and choruses. up with that little black uh, nub there on his guitar where the 
uh, strap thing normally is. Probably a volume control. You think? Mm -hmm. It's a real big one. Oh. Psych. Mm. Yeah, wait, what? will get upset with all the extra oh chord changes G that chord. I threw in. <laughs> um, I hope not. Nonetheless, love that piece. I think you're I probably a better musician than Paul, so time. don't worry about what he thinks. <laughs> Let's look below for a link, and that'll take you to my site, and you can check it out. Man, he just Very jumped nice. right into talking there. He, he, <laughs> like, it was nothing. He was just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. That just happened. And, uh, yeah, hit me up for lessons, you know. Guys. Hopefully Paul's not mad. You, you know you need lessons from me. Let's be real. <laughs> so Yeah, dude. The dude's badass, for sure. Um, uh, like I, like I said, so I, this, I, sorry, go ahead. This is, so this is Peter Sprague. Yeah. We were like talking said, about I, I, being badass. His stuff like would pop up randomly. He like knows his stuff, you know, jazz, classical, just kind of a badass player. Yeah, how would you describe the infestation going on here of Beatles? Oh, I would say pretty heavy, right? Like, <laughs> oh, definitely, that's... definitely, definitely. This one could share um an episode of Porters with uh <laughs> with talking It's so too. good. It's so good <laughs> yeah. it should be condemned. I, you know what I think. I I I will probably rewatch this one again. I have not seen this, to be honest. Um, I'll rewatch this again. There was an impro improv improvisatory section in the middle, yeah. where I believe he was just improvising in the jazz style, which that's gotta win him some bonus points, if you agree. Um, where you just kind of go off no sheet music, you just follow the changes and you play phrases uh you compose spontaneously so um see i didn't even think about that honestly i i would i'm not sure if i would know if something was uh improvised or not just by hearing it all the time you know mm -hmm. maybe in some specific instances like uh like that estas tone stuff is obviously not or like you know flamenco jam sessions are obviously not yeah. like, written out all the way but but yeah, I wouldn't necessarily be able to tell that by, by watching this guy. So that's a very cool insight. Well, I think the, I mean, if you have this kind of fretboard knowledge to make an arrangement like this mm -hmm. and you're skilled enough to play it, you're probably pretty good at improvising. Like this guy definitely has studied his jazz and everything. So mm -hmm. I would, I would, uh, I would assume that the, the skills are there. So why not, why not use them? I agree 100 percent Tony yeah like I mean you can tell that he is really comfortable in the instrument like he knows so much so if somebody says just make something up right like he doesn't have any problem just kind of following the structure but piecing it together in a, in a, in a new way absolutely absolutely that was really yeah. cool I was glad that we saw another um like <laughs> phenomenal one after the yeah. talk of Mitsu. I was worried we started too strong, but this guy can definitely <laughs> this guy can definitely follow that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and I don't know, but I just looking at this guy, he's like a he's like a his his face is like a combination of Matthew Grief and Andrew York. I was gonna say Matt Grief. It looks <laughs> and Matt plays the a cutaway guitar like that. Yeah, yeah, he does some um, jazz. And and does yeah he teaches jazz at the university I went to actually um, wow okay and so he's a and he's a full on cat he's a cat <laughs> yep the awesome you know can do the classical stuff at the top level um and also the jazz stuff at the top level so anyway yeah I I it looked kind of like him as well and the guitar for sure <laughs> yeah that's so funny. Yeah. Man, all right. Who's the next one? The next next person up is gonna be a uh, uh, Martha Masters lookalike here. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just kidding. So this is the probably the oldest video we've had on the podcast. November what? of 2006. <laughs> oh, wow. I think YouTube was in its infancy, wasn't it? Oh my gosh, this must have been the first, like one of the first YouTube videos. <laughs> 
Hey, you can tell by how <laughs> blurry the photo is and stuff. They used to only let you um yeah look it's 240p so maximum 240p maximum this is old youtube but yeah um per uh per olav has been you know one of the he's definitely one of the first guys on youtube that played he plays like every piece you know um yeah i remember yeah, seeing yeah. videos of his years ago looking at yeah. pieces like when i for I started playing classical guitar in 2011. So when I started playing classical guitar, I would look up like the studies I was learning and he would have a video of them or any right. piece I was learning. He'd already played it on here. So yeah, he has played a massive amount of stuff, a lot of standard rep and a lot of um, like arrangements of classics that are not necessarily guitar pieces like the Canon and D or some of the basic cello suite stuff, uh, like the really popular one, the uh, cello suite prelude number one. Um, and, you know, stuff like this, a lot of pop arrangements. And a lot of it's normally very accessible, and the sheet music is is pretty high quality across the board. Um, yeah, I mean, anybody that knows classical guitar pretty well has probably, um, you know, come across this guy in their search for a uh, sheet music for an arrangement. Yep. That as well. All right. Let's, uh, let's check it out. Definitely, this falls more into the category of the more simple arrangements we've looked at today, but with significantly better playing. Yeah, very clean playing. And it looks like he's reading it, like he just wrote it out. He hasn't looked yeah. at his left hand once. those little thirds in there. Great sense of rhythm. Like, it just moves along real beautifully. taking this though i don't even think, know if the technology was around for a common person to splice things together without having a bunch of equipment or something you know yeah i mean not not by yourself it, it would have been uh... right yeah he is recording the audio on professional microphones though so it is synced up there's no way that his video camera audio is this good he might have a <laughs> way to plug those microphones into the video camera, but um, yeah, that's definitely not like a, I mean, I don't even know what you would use in 2006, like what, um, like an actual video camera and do... <laughs> or something. 
<laughs> yeah. I, I wonder where, where he <laughs> placed the mic, right? Because you don't see it, but you hear that it's a good mic, and he's got a lot of verb that he added, right? Yeah, it could literally yeah. just be right where the camera is. It might mm. be connected to the camera, or maybe um, has them on the sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but jokes on both of you. This is actually filmed on the new Apple 12. You know the <laughs> the new iPhone 12. You know what I'm saying? There's a couple yeah. of like YouTubers who um, have affiliations with Google, and they've actually like gone in and changed things like dates and like um, various things to be funny. So you never know. Hmm. It's possible. Yeah, he yeah, filmed this okay. last week. That's crazy. He's being kind of funny. Um, at the end, it said "all lefts reserved." I thought it was funny. Oh, I didn't said, see that. Nice. All, I don't like, get it. Check out the end. Oh, all I see. I, I get it. All, all lefts reversed. <laughs> reversed. What? Oh my god! He's uh, got a double pun. You guys. What is he doing? <laughs> That's hilarious. I did not notice that at all. All lefts reversed. Yes, and his house looks squeaky clean, but have no doubt underneath the surface. There are thousands of beetles. Yeah. I, I'd hang out with him. I, I'd hang out with him. <laughs> I'd have coffee with him. I think it would be fun. The he beetles like are a... strong with this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? Thomas is, I'm sorry. Uh... <laughs> my cat keeps trying to get in my lap. And I bring him on uh, the here. bring him on the yeah. podcast. What are Come you doing? Off you, silly man. It's just that if he gets it in my lap on his own, he'll uh He'll uh, he'll scratch the heck out of me, man. Scratch the heck out of me. Here he is. Here he is. Oh, hey there, Ralph. You're a good boy. Yeah. Uh, very he, nice. He won't speak when he's he's being held like this. He's he's content. He's fully content. But yes, he, uh, he comes to sit in my lap five times a day, and I cannot refuse. Or he will he will he's very persistent. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome aboard. It was probably the lovely sounds of uh, Pearl Olaf's playing that brought him over. I realize now that you're wearing headphones, but I already started saying that sentence. So, <laughs> oh well. Absolutely, absolutely, man. You are. <laughs> I'm sorry. This cat situation is <laughs> is intense. So what do you think? Yeah. Should we should we talk to some of these people from uh, like twenty years ago in the comments section? <laughs> I mean, uh, all these comments are so recent still, too. Yeah. I want to find one comment from like sixteen years ago. Yeah. Well, this one isn't uh, blessed like the other one. Last time we found a uh, uh, that Jesus Christ, the Savior Himself, had commented on uh, one of these guitar arrangement videos. Who knew that? You know, the Redeemer was such a fan of uh, classical guitar arrangements. I uh, I replied to that comment, too, actually, and told him to uh, to comment on our podcast, but he never did. Jesus does not listen to the Guitar Arrangers podcast. <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor Jesus, you know. Yeah, and he's not getting paid for this either. All right, let's 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 check out the next one. I was trying to find the, the absolute <laughs> oldest comment. I mean, we're in 12 years ago now. Yeah, and don't, uh, you know, poor Ralphie. He can't bear to see the outside right now. He's disappearing. Oh, he's burying his head. <laughs> this is how he does. This is every day. This is five times a day I do this with this cat. Uh... It's like, I don't... No, nope, there he goes again. <laughs> you, you pay me if you want me to be on this podcast. That's what he's saying. Yeah. Do we have any other videos? All right. So here we have Joe H-L-E-R-S. Olers? Olers. J Olers. Yeah, okay. I read. I just read Joe. <laughs> Joelers. Joelers. Um, okay, acoustic guitar cover. A lot of people don't like to use the word arrangement.
Playing in the library. I love his book collection. Who cares about music when you got books like that? These are like um, entire uh, editions of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, probably the classics. But the hat kind of ruins it for me. Oh, you're a hater. <laughs> I, I, it's just mildly distracting. Like, is that a gimmick or what? It's a fedora. What do you mean? Fedora is many things, you know? Wait, is that a, a fedora? I think it's there's a name for that hat. It's like a... Oh, I'm so bad with my hats. Is it pork pie? Is it no, boiler or something? Yeah, there's a boiler. brought it back for you, Thomas. Yeah, yeah. We got, we got the chromaticism here. I like that chromaticism too, yeah. Big tone change on the last chord. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Yeah, that's that's nice. You know, he's the only one who put in that cascading run between the sections, and that's clever. It's a little bit of like the Chad Atkins thing. You know, uh, like a little bit of like that country idea of using cascading runs, including the open strings. I like that. Yeah, I mean, he added a couple of things that were totally different from anything else that we heard in this arrangement. So it's 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 pretty cool to see how many uh, you know times this piece could be done. Uh, although there are some similarities, like the A minor chord and the G chord, and you know some things you just can't avoid, you know, uh, when you're arranging this. But you know, he still find a way, found a way to kind of spice it up a little bit in his own sort of style. Which I, yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, however, I know he hasn't read all those books on the shelves. Ah. Okay. Well, I think, I mean, you know, some of those are for when you need to look something up before Google. Uh, uh, that's right. That's, that's, right. that's, that's, that's right. You're right. That's what that's for. Like, okay. you know, you're not supposed to read all those cover to cover. Tony's speaking a bunch of uh, old man gibberish right now. What, a time before Google? What are you? What are you talking about? I'm not Ooh, saying I ever. Bad. I'm not saying I ever did that, but <laughs> I've heard. I've heard stories. My mom has a. <laughs> my mom has a master's degree in like library science or something. Oh, so she she's a. You're saying is she's she's really good at using Google. She tells me the uh, the stories of the before times. <laughs> Back when people read books. Yeah, exactly. I've heard, you know, it seemed like a nice time. I don't know. I've heard some yeah. good things. No, no, books are great. His his choice of, you know, the location is fantastic. I love that, the books. <laughs> Peter also likes collecting books he will never read. Like everything you guys are seeing in that cabinet right there is like like music, like like guitar methods, guitar like material. And then, Harry um, Potter like, books. No, no, I've never. Read Harry <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, yeah, but, yeah, but I'll never get to reading that. I'll, I'll like there's no uh, way I know everything that's there, you know. Yeah, but yeah, like, no, I've guess, uh, I've looked through that bookshelf of yours, and I know it's fifty percent manga. <laughs> okay, it's, I'm pretty sure. That's, I don't know if that's how you say it. But it's fifty percent anime books. 
Yeah. Let's put it that yeah. way. I know nothing about an- anime. Nothing. <laughs> That's so bad. We're going to have to kick him off before our Sword Art Online episode. <laughs> Is that a bad thing to say? Am I like the black sheep for not no. up to anime? No, I'm saying it because we're, we're never. There's no way. There's no way in hell we're ever gonna do a sword art online episode. That I, the, I sword art online is the words that scourge of the earth. It's the scourge of the earth. Sword art online. If you if you're in the audience and you like sword art online, please unsubscribe to this podcast immediately. <laughs> Sure. Our market research shows that almost all of our fans uh, come watch these videos directly after anime on YouTube. So, anime oh, so, review podcasts. So, Tony, you'll have to edit what Thomas said because uh, he'll just he'll just n- make this nosedive, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, for all the people at Fail. home, Fail. you know, I actually met Peter because I myself also once had a crippling beetle infestation. And I remember at work, he told me that he was a big fan of Beatles. And I was like, oh, he's just the guy to fix this problem. Anyways, my, my house has never been cleaner. Thank you, Peter. Uh, and and you, as you can see, you know, Ralphie is, Ralphie is also incredibly happy. So he says, thank you, Peter. Thank oh, you nice. for, he says, thank you. I'd love to thank meet you Ralphie for sometimes. House. Yeah, I don't know why he's been sitting in my lap five times a day lately, you know? Normally that happens when you're about to mysteriously die in a car accident, you know? Yeah. That your cat's, like, sitting on you all the time. Uh, well, so hopefully no, no, stop, I'm still stop, gonna stop. be kicking. You're, you're creeping me out. You're creeping me out, man. Come he's on. a good boy. <laughs> I have I have five. I have five. Um, oh, 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 oh. There, there he right goes. There. <laughs> Are you about to say <laughs> that at all? You have five cats? Is that what I was about to He's hear? He's got a lot of cats, yeah. I oh got my five gosh. Cats. Yeah. I am so- jealous of both of your guys' setups. Got guitars <laughs> on the wall, got cats in the house. This is this is me. I live and there's like two feet in front of me. Square. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Peter has a lot of cats. I don't know if Peter does a lot of lessons at home, but uh my cat's always trying to help out with the lessons. He's always trying to help me teach, you know, guitar and stuff yeah. to the kiddos. But uh, yeah, you got a lot of cats, a lot of rescued cats that you kind of had to uh, take care of medically. And uh, I've even seen uh, you've got that one cat that's like got the funny looking uh, chin. That one's my favorite one. Yeah, that that cat was very nice. I imagine all of this will get edited. So it doesn't matter what we say, right? Not necessarily, no. <laughs> I mean, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I like I mean, cats. I'll keep any cat-related content. <laughs> I, My editing is very biased. Yeah. I mean, well, what, what I'm saying is like this might need its own episode or whatever. You know, just cat-related oh, stuff. We know? should do that. We're we're planning to start doing some interview episodes soon. We should definitely do um like a six-part interview. You and then the five cats back to back. For sure. Get, they- get to know them all. And what they think about guitar arranging. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, you know, I'll take up a lot of time with cats. Like, I'm being conscious to not let it, you know, get out of hand. But this door is locked for those purposes, you know. Um, if it's no open, they will, yeah, they will certainly uh, barge in. If it's open, <laughs> it seems I would definitely be nervous with, with those guitars i imagine that door is closed uh most of the time it is it is yeah and obviously locked because if i'm not at home you know if uh somebody knows of everything that's in here you know it kind of makes it kind of a a bit of a target if you know what i mean um so i i try to keep this pretty safe pretty pretty secure um, another, <laughs> another thing, another and, thing. Yeah, is, and it, Peter's coming to us live from uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, where his apartment yeah. is located. So anyone who is interested in those guitars, Albuquerque, That's right. I'll give New you my Mexico. zip code, my address, and you know what floor I'm on, and you know which way my window faces. So inquiries welcome. Yeah, and this is actually, you know, it's funny because this, this is a great segue because I know we were trying to figure out how we were going to introduce this, but you know, Peter is is you know he's given up his career in guitar. Uh, he's been doing a lot of bodybuilding lately, and he's actually going to be. Uh, he just got hired to be the bodyguard 
for uh, Tony. I don't know why you're laughing. Please uh, show show this bodyguard some respect. Uh, you know, and Lady Gaga's bodyguard. Uh, I thought you were gonna say has- Taylor Swift. <laughs> Bring it back. <laughs> oh. No, uh, no, because can we both can we both? I... No, because he's too he's too handsome. They won't let him upstage Taylor Swift. Uh, so that's why he's he's you know going with Lady Gaga. You know. So you're saying Lady Gaga is is cuter than Taylor? I don't know. I feel like if I say it one way or the other, the 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 you know the little monsters are gonna come out <laughs> and, yeah. and defend I, one of them. Yeah. You're definitely <laughs> treading in dangerous territory here. Yeah, I, uh... let's get the cats back. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just for the record, I am a, a fan of both to an extent. Um, if you don't believe me, if you don't believe me, I on the other side of this door, it, there are more books, and I have a Lady Gaga book this big, like a like yeah. a coffee table book. By, uh, <laughs> who's a famous photographer? Tony Richards, I think. He's a famous like photographer. He followed her around and like took all these pictures of her, like. The glory days, you know, when she wore the meat dress and everything. So, man, like a Lady Gaga coffee table, like pop up book would be the coolest yeah. thing ever. Like a pop up book. Yeah. That was what I was imagining in my head so when she, you said that. So she pops up like, like with a meat <laughs> yeah, dress. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I pat, patent it. Make some money. Yeah. You know, few people know that, uh, you know, I was, at, you know, before Peter even got, you know, hired to do this whole Lady Gaga bodyguard thing, you know, I was actually the one who was hired to eat the meat dress after she wore it, you know? Oh. It was hard work. I mean, you shouldn't let that stuff go to waste, even though, yes, it was raw meat that was sort of, you know, being smushed, smushed into a chair for several hours. They you know, offered you Thomas, the they're like, do you want, you know, one of the chefs to cook this up for you? And, and I was like, no. At the time, I was on a like a raw only, raw meat only diet. So I thought it would be like a really good opportunity for me. But that's actually how, you know, uh, uh, Lady Gaga and Peter got introduced. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Peter, can you believe how Peter says yeah like he doesn't remember? Yeah. I uh <laughs> you know, look, animals have died for that dress. So like, you know, we shouldn't just dispose, dispose Oh, that's of that, true. Right? That's true. Peter's a, a vegetarian. I am. Yeah, I went to his house and he gave me a a mushroom pizza one time. It was pretty good. Yeah, I don't that's, remember that, but That's amazing. I mean, I go to a meat eater's house and they don't give me any food, so I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. So What's there, going there on? no no meat dresses allowed in this household. Oh dang. Well, we might as well just cancel our date for later. Uh. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sticking around to the end. If you like what you saw, please leave us a like and subscribe. Let us know in the comments if you have a favorite arrangement from today's episode or if we missed one. All right. Big thank you to all the guitarists we talked about today. Uh, Be sure to check out their videos in the description below. And please uh, leave a comment and tell Peter that he was awesome and he should come back. And uh, also <laughs> check out the Guitar Arrangers Collective Facebook group. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. 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 Thanks for having me, guys. It was a lot of fun. Of yeah. Course. Would love now to that do you've it again. Been, uh, yeah. Now that you've been in for one Beatles song, you know, now uh, it's only a matter of time till we get some more Beatles stuff it's, going. Be the official Beatles correspondent.